Hello everyone, welcome back to the next lesson of chapter 5. Today we will be covering section 5.3 where we will, be, we will be exploring trigonometric ratios for angles greater than 90 degrees. So last lesson we looked at primary and reciprocal ratios within a right angle triangle and we only really worked with angles less than 90 degrees but today we will expand our understanding of angles and go greater than 90 degrees. Again, here's the chapter outline and you can find extra practice questions on today's topics on pages, on page actually, 292. So let's get started. Let's go over the success criteria for this lesson. We wanna be able to express angles that are over 90 degrees in what a format that we call standard position using a Cartesian plane and be able to work with these angles as well so we can solve problems. We also want to learn the relationship between the related acute angle and the principal angle. And these terms might be somewhat foreign to you, but no worries because we will go through everything in these slides. So let's go. So here we go. Let's go over all the definitions for all these new terms that I just mentioned in the success criteria. Up first, we have standard position. And this is just a way to show or express an angle in a Cartesian plane which is measured from initial, from initial arm to terminal arm and whose vertex is at the origin. Now that might sound a little complicated, but it's really not, it's really, really simple. And if we take a look at the first image here we have on the right, we can see that we have an X, Y coordinate system. And this is our Cartesian plane. So our Cartesian plane, if we take out all the extra stuff in there, it's just our X and Y axis axis right that's our cartesian plane um and along the positive y-axis right here's the positive y-axis here's the negative y-axis so along the positive y-axis we have the initial arm right and the initial arm is where the angle begins right and to show it in standard position we start at this initial arm and we go counterclockwise all the way to the terminal arm. That's why there's an arrow here. And we can see that these top arms, or sorry, these two arms meet right at the origin of the Cartesian plane. So here we have the initial arm going in the positive uh, X direction and the terminal arm just goes in this random direction um, and they meet at the origin. So that's their vertex, the origin of the Cartesian plane. So I'll explain the rest of the stuff that's in that first image, but let's just carry on with the definitions. Next, we can look at the rate, uh, related acute angle right here, which is represented by beta in this case, but it could be represented by theta, alpha, or anything we choose, but I chose beta. And you usually uh, will see beta chosen to represent the uh, related acute angle in many questions. So this is the acute angle between the terminal arm and the x-axis, right? So you see here, we have our terminal arm and here's our x-axis, our closest x-axis. And here's that related acute angle. It wouldn't be with this x-axis because this would not be an acute angle, right? If the terminal arm was here, it'd be this angle. And matter of fact, the related acute angle only appears in the second, third and fourth quadrants of the Cartesian plane because in the first quadrant, it'd be the same angle as the principal angle, which we'll go over next. But basically, this is our principal angle, the angle going from initial to the terminal arm, which again, I'll go over the definition in just a sec. Um, and if we had the terminal arm here, our related acute angle B would also be theta. So beta slash theta, it'd be the same angle. So our related acute angle, we really only need it in our second, third and fourth quadrants of our Cartesian plane, okay? So let's move on. The principal angle, which in this case is represented by theta, is the angle we are measuring, is the angle between the initial arm and the terminal arm, like I just mentioned, which can have a value from zero to 360, right? So if we go back to the first image here, uh, we have the initial arm here and the terminal arm. And here is our principal angle. The measure this is the angle that we're actually working with we're measuring from initial arm to terminal arm 
and it could be from 0 to 360 because the terminal arm could be here and it could be 0 or it could go all the way around to 360 right or it could be the terminal arm could be at any of these points and the principal angle just goes from initial arm to terminal arm that's all you need to remember okay and lastly we have the negative angle which we are representing with alpha right that's that weird little a there um, the negative angle is basically the principal angle just going in the clockwise direction so um, we can see that our principal angle i forgot to mention goes counterclockwise but that's you know intuitive that it goes from initial arm to terminal arm this way right um and the negative angle just goes the other way right that's why i'm saying it's very similar it just goes in the neg get negative direction and our angle will have a negative sign in front of it because we are going in the negative clockwise direction so our negative angle will actually have a range from zero degrees to two uh from zero degrees to negative 360 degrees and we can see our negative angle in the second image here we have our cartesian plane our x and y directions our x and y axis is my bad and here's our initial arm here's our terminal arm and again if we were um using our principal angle we'd go this way and our angle would be somewhere between 180 and 270 but in this case, we're going the other way. We're using the negative angle and our negative angle could be from negative 90 to negative 180, right? In that range. Okay, let's move on. Now let's go over the trigonometric ratios using our principal angle as the angle we are working with. In the next theory video, we will go over something called the CAST rule, the C-A-S-T rule. Uh, which will make it very easy for us to remember the sign of each primary and reciprocal ratio in each quadrant. But for now, we'll just get a feel from the for the changes in sign for each ratio, right? In the first quadrant, we have, uh, as we had before, our primary ratios will stay the same, as you can see on the right. So our sine theta will still be sine theta, our cos theta will still be positive cos theta, tan theta will be positive tan, uh, tan theta. And um, we can see this because if we just kind of draw, which we'll go over in the next video, but if we kind of just draw a triangle here, right, we can see that uh, going up, we are going in the positive y direction and going right, we're going in the positive x direction. So if we have a number one here, let's say this is A, this is B, and this is C, or actually I'll write it as we will go over in the next video this is y x and r right our ratio of sine theta will be opposite over hypotenuse which would be y over r but r is always going to be positive and in this case y is also positive so our sine theta is going to be a positive ratio and that's basically how we get each of the ratios and see if they're negative or positive but again we'll go over all that in detail in the next video so let's move on Okay, moving on to quadrant two. Now our principal angle will be 180 minus the related acute angle, right? So in this case, I know I said beta is usually what we use to represent um, the related acute angle, but in this case, we're using um, theta. Uh, so our principal angle is gonna be this blue line right here, and it goes past 90 degrees, but it doesn't go past 180. That's why it's uh, the principal angle is 180. So this line right here, minus this th uh, theta angle will give us our prin principal angle and so our uh sine of 180 minus theta right our principal angle will be equal to sine of our related acute angle and it will stay the same it will stay positive right because if we go all the way here and Actually I'll, actually, I'll actually explain that after I go over all the ratios. Then we have cos of 180 minus theta, our principal angle, will be equal to the negative of cos of the related acute angle, which is theta. And then tan will be the same. Tan will be uh, tan of 180 minus theta, which is our principal angle, 
will be negative tan theta, which is negative tan of the related acute angle, right? And the way this works is that, again, like we did in the last slide, if we were to draw a triangle here, right? And if, since we're going in the negative x direction, this right here will be negative. This length of this triangle will be negative since we're going to the left. And this length of this triangle will be positive. I know it's weird to think of lengths as negative, but just think of this side as being negative, this x coordinate. Again, we will go over this in the next video, but if I was to have a point here, it would have a negative x value and a positive y value, right? That's what, that's what I'm representing here. And again, our r value here will be positive always. And so when we do sine, we do positive over hypotenuse. So when we take this angle theta and we do positive over hypotenuse, we will get y over r again, and this ratio will be positive. But if we do cos theta, right, cos theta of, uh, cos theta, so our, we're using our related acute angle, and cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we're gonna use this value here, which is gonna be a negative value. So our x is gonna be negative over r, which is our hypotenuse, right? And so if you take this triangle, right, if you take this triangle out of here, and if we just use the related acute angle, yes, this will be all positive values. But since we're, use, we're working with the principal angle, which goes from the, from the initial arm all the way to the terminal arm, which is kind of pointing in the negative x direction, we have to consider this value as negative, right? If we, we can take it out of here and use the, this is where the related acute angle actually comes in handy because we can kind of think of this as our own triangle separated from the question. We can take it out. We can use our primary ratios, right? On this triangle, but then we either need to change the sign to a negative or leave it as a positive depending on what quadrant we're in because we could be going in the negative X direction or the negative Y direction, which we'll see in the next couple slides, but we we need to consider which quadrant we're in uh, because it will change the signs of our ratios. And we will go over that in more detail in the next video again, but you can just see and get a feel for, you know, like how the ratios are gonna change depending on what direction in the Cartesian plane we're going in, okay? Okay, let's move on. Okay, next, is quadrant three and in quadrant uh, three we have our principal angle being 180 plus our related acute angle theta so we're going from the initial arm this is our terminal arm ignore this this is our terminal arm we're going all the way here right um our sign of our principal angle now is going to be the negative or our related acute angle because again if we draw a little triangle here. Um, we're going in the negative x direction and in the negative y direction. So if we do sine, we're doing opposite over hypotenuse, our y is gonna be negative and our r is gonna be positive. So that ratio is gonna be negative. It's gonna be a negative y over r. If we do cosine, again, we're doing adjacent over hypotenuse, but again, our adjacent is negative x. So it's also gonna be negative over a positive number in the hypotenuse. So our ratio is gonna turn negative. And our tan, since we're since tan is opposite over adjacent, our opposite is a negative number. Our adjacent is a negative number. So they're kind of just gonna cancel out the negatives and it's just gonna be y over x, right? And we can see that if we take this triangle out and make everything positive, x, y, theta and r, we can evaluate this using our normal sine, uh, cos and tan, or our primary ratios, right? Using this related acute angle. But once we go back to the question and we, you, we're using our principal angle, we're going all the way to the negative x and y direction. So we have to consider those negatives. And as you can see, they'll change the sign of our ratios as well. Okay.
Lastly, for quadrant four, our principal angle will be 360 minus the related acute angle. So we're going all the way from our initial arm to our terminal arm, which is here. That's our um, principal angle, right? Going, always going counterclockwise, right? You might be tempted to go this way, but this is our negative angle. That's not our principal angle. Okay. Um, so here we have our ratios. The sine ratio, the sine of the principal angle, right? We're taking this whole angle. Let's say we call this angle beta. So sine of beta or sine of alpha, right? We're going to change this to alpha. Sine of alpha is going to be the same as the negative sine of this principal angle. So if we draw a triangle, we take this triangle out and we um, get the sine, right? When all the measurements are positive, let's say we're here. We have an X value, Y value, R value. Everything's positive. We're going to get our sine of theta, which is going to be equal to Y over R. But then when we bring it back to the question, we have to kind of see which direction we're going in, right? We're going in the positive X direction, but we're going in the negative Y direction. So this Y is really going to turn into like a negative like this, right? So our sine ratio is actually going to be negative. Next, we have cosine. So cosine of alpha or cosine of 360 minus theta, which is our principal angle, is going to equal positive cos theta because, again, um, cos, remember, is adjacent over hypotenuse, right? And our adjacent this time is going in the, in the positive x direction. And so we're going to have positive x over r, which is always positive. It's going to give us a positive ratio. Um, and we have tan of the principal angle. It's going to equal negative tan theta because it's going to be opposite. And we're going to have a negative here, right? Because we're going the negative y direction and a positive x. So negative y over positive x is going to give you a negative ratio in the end. Okay, guys, and that is it for exploring angles greater than 90 degrees. And thank you so much for watching the video. I know it was a little complicated, but if you need, go back, watch it again, or go look at the textbook. Maybe you reading the information is easier for you than me uh, here talking. Um, and in the next video, we will again go over some examples using this theory. And again, make sure you keep practicing.